The Doctor. The Doctor Who TV show. It's been around since 1963. Everybody who's anybody knows about Doctor Who. Even if you're not a fan of the show, you know one of two things. You know who the Doctor is and you know what the TARDIS is. A lot of fans nowadays have been around since the 2005 revival and not fully aware of everything that went on, especially back in 1963. And there's a lot of interesting facts about the TV show back then. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to talk about all this stuff that was around back then. My name is Scott and I'm full of useless information which I'm going to share with you today as we talk about 10 facts that you may not know about the First Doctor. Number 10. Casting. So let's start this list before the TV series started. The casting of the Doctor. Now nowadays, being the Doctor is a hell of a plum of rock. I mean, it's up there with playing James Bond. But back then, it wasn't. Let's face it, Doctor Who when it started was a stopgap TV show between Grandstand and Jukebox. It was a cheap show, so getting a high profile actor was going to be a no-go. But they did have lots of different ideas of who they actually wanted. Some of the people they actually considered were Jeffrey Baden, Alan Webb and Cyril Cusack. Now they were all spoken to, but they all three of those declined. Now most of them have had some involvement in Doctor Who over the years, but never as the Doctor. Another name that was in contention was somebody by the name of Hugh David, but Verity Lambert actually put a no to that because she thought he was too young and she wanted somebody older to play the first Doctor. The person she had in mind was William Hartnell. Now William Hartnell was actually quite up for playing the role of the Doctor because he was actually quite used to playing military types and subtypes, so playing something completely different was perfect for him because he was now typecast. And that is how history was made. Number nine, not the hero. So back when the TV shows first started, and same again, they were in the planning stages, it was always planned that the Doctor, or Doctor Who, as he was still called at this stage, was not going to be the hero of the story. The hero of the story was always planned to be Ian Chesterton. That's why throughout the whole run of the first Doctor, you always had that male action hero type, because they were planned to be the action hero. Whereas the first Doctor, he was an explorer and a diplomat, not the action hero type. Now obviously as the years have gone on, that's gone and it was only the first Doctor that wasn't the hero like he is today. Number eight, the Doctor smokes. Yep, that title is correct. The first Doctor was a smoker. He is also the only on-screen Doctor to smoke. The eighth Doctor has smoked in a comic book, but on screen it's only ever been the first Doctor. Unfortunately, this was also a plot to point of trying to make fire, but still, the first Doctor smoked is something they dropped very quickly. It only ever happened in that one episode and never happened again. I mean, it's the 60s, it was okay, but nowadays, it would have been so wrong. I mean, can you imagine Jodie Whittaker's Doctor with a fag in her mouth walking up to a Dalek? I mean, apart from that, it would look so cool, but the outroar, the outcry, the riots that would happen. Number seven, changing personalities. Something that's quite modern today where you make a pilot episode that you actually get to test around with and sometimes those pilot episodes are brilliant and it goes to a TV show straight away. The Doctor actually had a pilot episode which was never actually broadcast. Something that was unheard of back in the day. But the reason being is a lot of things were wrong with it, especially the first Doctor. He was very abrupt, very rude, very unapproachable. Nobody actually liked the first Doctor. The producers hated it, which is one of the reasons why they asked for the pilot to be redone. Now in the second pilot, the one that I was actually broadcast, he was toned down a lot, but he was still very abrupt and very rude. And over the next like 13 weeks, that rudeness and abruptness actually slowly faded out. So by the time the serial Marco Polo came out, he was more of the loving grandfather that we all come to know and love today. But yes, the Doctor changed his personality over 13 weeks, which we're all glad and thankful for. Number six, the Doctor is a murderer. The Doctor, the man who never carries a gun. And that was said by Davros. The first, tenth Doctor also actually pointed out that he got cleverer. He's taken life, but he got cleverer and talked people into taking their own lives. Something we saw a lot of in the seventh Doctor. In fact, the sixth Doctor actually killed people in self-defense. But none of those touch 
on what the First Doctor did. The First Doctor was going to kill somebody in cold blood. Why? Because they were hunting them? He got injured. So rather than the guy that was injured give away their position, the Doctor's companion wanted to help him, but the Doctor picked up a rock and was going to smash his head in. Luckily, Ian Chesterton stopped him, so we never actually had the First Doctor killing somebody, but we were this close, this close, for the First Doctor to being a cold-blooded murderer. Number five, the Doctor is colourblind. Have you ever wondered why the First and Second Doctors are shown in black and white? Now, most of you are probably thinking, well, that was the technology at the time, but it wasn't. Bear in mind, Star Trek, the original series, came out in between the first and second Doctors, and that was in colour. There were colour TV shows. So why was the first and second Doctors in black and white? Well, bizarrely enough, the answer to that is actually in the novelisation of The Day of the Doctor. The War Doctor actually said that the first Doctor and the second Doctor were both colourblind. And he never realised this until he cut to his third incarnation. Which is why, from the third Doctor onwards, it's in colour. But yeah, the Doctor's colourblind, which is why we get to watch it in black and white. I love it when it all works. Number four, the TARDIS has actually been sabotaged. The TARDIS is probably one of the most iconic things in TV history. In fact, the TARDIS is more associated with Doctor Who than it is being with the police force, which is bizarre because it is actually a police box. It's weird, but why? Why is it stuck like that? Now, we always assume it's because it was a faulty chameleon circuit and the Doctor just got to know and love the actual blue box. But there's actually more to it. I mean, originally, the TARDIS was going to have a fully functioning chameleon circuit and the TARDIS was going to change from week to week to adjust to its surroundings, but it was deemed too expensive. So the second plan was to make it invisible but it was too impractical to pull off. So that's why they kept it as the police box, just to save money. And we as fans are all grateful for it. But like I said, it was sabotaged. In On Story, it's sabotaged. It was forced to be like that. Who by? Well, it was the 11th Doctor that did it. In 2013, the Doctor Who magazine released a comic book strip called Hunters of the Burning Stone. It's actually a sort of sequel to the original four episodes, the original serial. But the Doctor realises all his stuff that he does, he needs to protect the world of good from evil. And the best way to do it is with an icon. Which is why he goes back and destroys the chameleon circuit to make sure that the TARDIS stays as the police box. To give evil something to fear, to give the side of good that hope, that symbol. Whenever you see that police box, you know help is on the way. And if you're evil, you see that police box, you know your time is up. But it works, yes. The 11th Doctor actually sabotaged the TARDIS. Number three, Doctorless episodes. So since the 2005 revival, there's been what's called the Doctor Light episode, where the lead actor is a more of a supporting character rather than being on the like, front line. There's been some fantastic episodes like this, mainly Blink, what a brilliant episode. And there's been some appalling episodes, Love and Monsters. <laughs> But it's not something new. In fact, it was quite common during the first Doctor's reign for William Hartnell to have a week off his holiday. You'll see him like, oh, and keel over. And then the next episode, he'll be fine. That keeling over is actually a completely different actor. He's actually on holiday when that was being filmed. So yeah, the whole Doctor Light episode is nothing new. It happened quite often, quite a lot actually. But there's one thing and it's only ever happened during the first Doctor and that was a Doctor Luss episode. Yes, there's an episode in the third series of Doctor Who called Mission to the Unknown. Now, this was actually an introduction episode to the 12 part of Dalek's Master Plan, which happened three weeks later. And that's all it is there for, is to set up that mega epic. But there's no Doctor, there's no Companions, there's no TARDIS, there's nothing. William Hartnell is credited due to contractual reasons, but the rest of the cast are not even in the end credits. Which is weird, a Doctor Who episode without the Doctor, the TARDIS. Unfortunately, you will never ever get to watch this episode because none of it actually exists anymore. Number two, the Christmas episode. 
Christmas specials have been a staple since the 2005 revival. Every year we get a Christmas special. There's something majestic and wonderful and brilliant about them. Except for the last two that have been on New Year's Day. God damn you, Chibnall. But this is the same again. This is nothing new. Now, throughout the second Doctors and onwards, Doctor Who always had a break that never actually fell over the Christmas period. But in the first Doctor, there was actually a Christmas special. In fact, there was an actual normal episode broadcast on Christmas Day. And it was smack in the middle of the epic Daleks master plan. But obviously, they didn't want to have a Christmas story with Daleks trying to take over the universe or destroy the universe like they normally do. So they changed it slightly. They're on the run from the Daleks and they have like a fun little adventure around a police station because the police think the TARDIS is a real police box. It's brilliant. And then they run away from the police through a film studio. They bump into various actors like Charlie Chapman. It's just a fun episode where it doesn't progress to the story of the Dalek Master Plan, but it's a nice little Christmas special. And it's topped off with some ad-libbing by William Hartnell, who turns around, faces the camera, and breaks the fourth wall and says, and a Merry Christmas to you all at home. That never happens today. That is just so cool. And that was back in the 60s. Number one, companion deaths. Companion deaths is something that's very, very, very rare. It's extremely rare. Even when a companion dies, the doctor finds a way to bring him back to life. Like Clara, who didn't actually, who is dead, but she isn't dead, it's weird. And then you have, back in the fifth doctor's reign, Adric. The only companion that actually died finite, except he wasn't. It happened twice. Well, once because one of the companions is a bit iffy. In one of the episodes, The Savages, a companion, Katrina, comes on board. During the Dalek Master Plan, she actually gets killed. Now, because she's in two different stories, I will argue that she is a companion. But the other one, Sarah. Now, this one, she came, became a companion and died within the same serial. This is what, that's the iffy one. People are saying, no, she's not a companion. She's not a companion. But yes, unofficially two, officially one companion actually snuffed it. Something that never happens today, but same again. It did happen back in the first Doctor's reign. So there we have it. 10 facts you may not know about the first Doctor. Now, there's always going to be someone in the comments saying, well, I knew that and I knew that. But luckily, I'm making this video, I'm not in the comment section today. But if there are any other facts you may know about, put them in the comments. I look forward to reading them and probably arguing with you that you're wrong. But still, let's get, let's get our conversation going. But other than that, don't forget to like the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button. Also, follow us on Twitter. But And I look forward to doing you another facts video on the second Doctor. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.